This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-hosts, as always, are Holly Christine and Gonzo Link. Hello, hello. Hello there. And, oh my god, it's been a few weeks. It's been a hell of a July for us. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Holly, like, like you and I discussed on Thespian Talk this, this past week, you know, you... I mean, you had this stuff going on, then you got sick, didn't you? Yeah. It was like, ugh. Um, the basement flooded. Um, my grandmother died. <laughs> uh-huh. Got sick. Oh. So, it's really been a great month. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, going into this month, I was planning on having, like, one week off because of Con Bravo. <laughs> Turned out we ended up having three, and it's because life kicked people in the balls. Uh, so, what about what about you, Gonzo? Uh, I've been pretty busy too. I've um, been I've been working pretty uh, working pretty hard. Uh, got some extra hours at my job, early morning hours, and uh, then I also had a lot of theater going on, and I got a sinus infection too. Oh wow! <laughs> so yeah, this month kind of kicked me in the ass a little too, but I mean I've been been doing all right, yeah. all things considered. And well, hopefully next month I will have some more theater stuff to do because our, one of our local theaters is doing Rumors by Neil Simon again. Well, I say again because this, I'm going to audition for it for the second time, uh, which makes no sense in context. But I'm auditioning for it. If I make it next month is going – starting next month through like October or whatever, I'll have the rehearsals and everything, which is going to be a lot of fun. What does that mean for this show? Absolutely nothing because rehearsals are at night. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Except for yeah. Sundays, but that affects a different show. Oh, so over this time, we've had a lot of buildup of, of just different news links and different stories. And just before, like like a day or two before we recorded this show, Holly and I independently discovered a site called movietriggers.com. Oh, man. <laughs> and thank you to whoever it was on Tumblr. It's just... If they put some screen caps from it. I've actually got the site up in front of me, and I'm looking at one that really got the attention of, of you know, me and, and definitely Holly and a few other people. They have, for, for what Movie Triggers is, is a site where you could go, you could type in a movie, and you could see what particular triggers you might run into in a movie. You know, such as Forrest Gump, if they had the Vietnam War, so you might be triggered mm-hmm. by war because, you know, veteran PTSD, all that good stuff, which is yeah, legitimate. Yeah, before we start, yeah, this is one of those things that, you know, I, I am sure some of you have heard me rant about people talking about triggers before. Movie triggers is one thing that is actually a good idea because yeah. you're actually mm-hmm. seeing and hearing something. It's not, I read this on Tumblr and therefore am triggered. This is, right. you know... A more, um, you know. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's a good idea. It's good yeah. in theory. In practice, well, you can't figure it. The person to talk to about this is um, Magdalene Cochran. Like she yes. does a very good job of explaining why reading something because it accesses a different part of your brain. Mm-hmm. Why reading something is different than seeing a picture or you know hearing something that then triggers you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because when you see something that that it reminds you of a particularly, you know, vividly horrendous time in your life. I mean, something that's just flashed in front of your face. I mean, yeah, that's, that's something that would, you know, it'd be nice to be warned before that happens. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. I mean, triggers, you know, for all the, the you know, the, the bad reputation that they've gotten in terms of just how people have overused them. I mean, they are, you know, it's a necessary thing to a certain degree. Yeah. Yeah. But that, but so, it, so the idea behind the site is what I'm saying is, is good. an actual good idea. Oh yeah. Yes. And now what happened to it is yeah the first one. The internet is what happened to it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because this is all user submitted. No. Hey, which yeah, well, oh, I'm looking here at Bambi, as in Walt Disney's 1942 Bambi, one we all know and love. We all know what happens. Pretty much, we know the big takeaway from it. Bambi's mother dies. La, 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 You know, that sort of thing. Yes. So, so they have here, I'm looking at six different triggers that they've put in for this movie. They have animal death. Okay. Fire. Thunderstorm. Death of a parent. 
Okay, okay. Not bad. Then misogyny and rape culture. Like, mm -hmm. huh? I don't what? know where misogyny would come into this. Um, um. I guess because the mother dies. And... Yeah, no, there aren't any comments about misogyny. Yeah. Um, I, well, yeah, I, I don't know. It, yeah, it's are just, the, what? It's, I just don't even know. I'm like, I'm trying to think if there's any sort of. It's been a long time since I've seen Bambi, so I don't yeah, know for sure. I, and like, the only thing that I can think of in regards to gender is the fact that Flower is a boy, and for many, many years, it didn't occur to me that Flower wasn't a girl. <laughs> like even though flower then hooks up with a with a girl skunk like i i don't know it just never occurred to me lesbianism in the 1940s oh my <laughs> disney was progressive well okay. i you know i i was just never a kid who thought much about that one way or the other just like bert and ernie i i assumed they were brothers because they were two dudes who lived together like it it never crossed my mind that they would just be friends or you know, else. anything else. Yeah. yeah I, just, right, right. I was a kid, so I assumed that they were related to each other because they lived together. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and speaking speaking of, of, of that sort of thing, Under Fire, there are a couple of comments under fire. One of, one of them states, you know, the whole forest burns. Okay, yeah. And then the other one, I think somebody is trolling. The skunk in this movie is totally flaming. Oh, yeah, that's that's got to be a Yeah, it's funny because I've seen, <laughs> since we both posted about it, Mm -hmm. um, I've seen other people now discussing the site and specifically Bambi because it's um, what I had pointed out when I looked at the site was that Bambi has more triggers in it than Die Hard. Yeah, that is <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, considering all of the death and blood and whatnot in, in and Die Hard. And terrorism and explosions yeah. and just, just broken glass on feet and yeah. Yeah. How, that's... How, how could that not? How could that be less triggering than Bambi? Right. Now, Bambi may have more intense triggers because some of the stuff is more personal, i.e., you know, death of a parent, animal death. If you're if you had a pet that died a really horrific right. death, and I can see it in a way. Yeah. Um, some of these because you know this is a movie that is geared toward children. Mm -hmm. um, now somebody did mention that a friend of theirs had seen Bambi when they were a kid, and then was so traumatized by it that their mother didn't let them watch anything um, worse than a G rating it for the next, I don't know, 12 years or something. That's... And I was like, seriously, that's, okay. that's some way over protection of your kid. If, that's... if you can't explain Bambi to them in a way that makes them able to cope with it. Yeah. I mean, God damn. It, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's, you'd sit the kid down say it, it was the only movie. Yes. Death is going to happen, but sometimes violent death may happen. I mean, we don't want it to ever happen, but yeah, you know, it's just. I mean, hey, that's that's life, kid. Yeah, and it's <laughs> li not likely to happen to you, especially no. anytime soon, or me. Um, oh yeah. But the one that really gets to me is the rape culture one. Yeah. Because I'm sitting here thinking, where could that have been? And we've discussed rape culture a lot on this show and on Thespian Talk. Hell, we probably even touched on it a little bit in the Port Charlie podcast. So it, it's, it's permeating everywhere. So you can't really escape knowing about rape culture and what it is. So but I, imagine I, my surprise seeing that as a trigger on this thing. And they have a yeah. comment. They, they do have a comment. Female animals force themselves on uninterested male characters, and males feel obligated to comply because of implied mating season. What MRA motherfucker wrote this? Yeah, you I'm like, Im implied mating season? Uh, you mean actual, like... <laughs> you mean the actual season? mating season that happens every single year? Yeah. That is a natural part yeah, of the it's world? A, yeah, it's, it's a biological fact. I'm, I'm sorry, people. Yeah, just because oh. we have our own standards for each other as human beings doesn't mean that animals have the same standards. That's it's what it boils down to for me. No, it's, it's like, like the whole deal of trying to make you know your your cats vegan. It's just like they don't they don't Ooh, follow yeah. that. You don't can't get me do started that. On that again. No, <laughs> that's that's animal abuse, and I I will I will 
I don't. I. I don't even want to say what I'll do to the people who who do that kind of thing, because it would probably get me in trouble. Yeah. Hi, you gonna say? Yeah. How's it going? <laughs> uh, but, but but yeah, like and admittedly, again, it's been a long time since I've seen Bambi. But I don't remember the girl animals forcing themselves on the boy animals. I'm pretty sure it was like the girl looks all pretty, and then the dude is all like, "Hey." Yeah. That's all it is. It's it's. Just like anything else in life so, and so in if nature. I'm, if I'm misremembering this and the women were all – like the only time that I could have imagined that a girl would be all over a dude would have been in the case of Flower because he's so shy. Yeah. But, but, but I think even then they were both shy. Yeah, and that's that strikes me as less as one trying to rape the other in, in that – in so much as just one trying to grab the attention and interest of the other. Yeah. That that's a courting thing. That's not a raping yeah. thing. <laughs> it's like, well, how how do you, how else do you get a date? Yeah. I mean, oh, it's okay. Oh, you other ways to get a date, of course. But yeah. I mean, like, still, I mean, you're you're trying to explain it to kids. It's like you know, you can't just have them go. It's like, so how are you doing? Cool, cool. You you wanna wanna go behind a tree? Yeah. Okay. That, okay. Yeah. If that worked with humans, holy shit! I think everybody'd be getting laid. Uh, which would not be such a bad thing, because I think there are some people out there that really need it. Uh, you know, just saying. But there was there's one other one I wanted to note from MovieTriggers.com before we move on to our other topic, is uh, Toy Story 3, which I'll admit I've not seen the second or third ones, but I have a basic idea of I've, I've what happened. I've seen it. Yeah, I have a basic yeah. idea of what happens between them, you know, between those two. And Toy Story 3, we have 3, 6, I, I had the number on there, but I clicked away before my memory stored it away. So 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, I'm counting here. Uh, yeah. All right. So we have um, Tears. Tears is a trigger. Te- okay. okay, maybe maybe if it's just like Tears, it's just like the, the trigger set. But what? What? I don't... Yeah. And none of these have I, comments, so we have no way to gauge why. My favorite yeah. one on this is Talking Toys. Talking Toys! Talking to- <laughs> I, I want to know, like, <laughs> did they have a horrible experience with Teddy Ruxpin? Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Like, I bet you the nostalgia critic put it in there. What Talking Toy was just, like, so traumatizing. I mean, I, were, were you that kid from Child's Play? Did you have a Furby that just wouldn't shut up? I mean, it's just... I mean, yeah, okay. Some of the talking toys might be a little creepy. The first Toy Story had the, the creepy cannibalized toys in Sid's room. They were a little creepy. Yeah. I don't think they were triggering. At least not to me. I'll tell you what, though. A Furby in a Toy Story movie would be, like, <laughs> cause for a trigger. Because it, it what if the whole movie was just them, like, finding it and be like... What is this thing? It seems to exist in both worlds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the only toy that you can't actually understand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but they they also went with redundancy for speaking toys as well. Oh. They also have interspecies romance. These um. are toys. <laughs> yeah. I don't and I don't remember who was interspecies romancing here. Um, I don't know. I mean, there, there was romance between Jesse and Buzz, but I mean, they're both humans. Human. Yeah, so I don't really know. Unless you count cowboy and spaceman different species in this movie. Yeah, I would. Cause it's so just... on that note, I looked up Shrek, uh, to you know, because the oh, dinosaur oh loves donkey. Oh my god. Oh, right, yeah. Interspecies romance is not listed. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh okay. Okay, I'm seeing... Listen, you said Shrek. I brought it up on the search. It says 16 triggers. That's what it says on the search. I'm pulling it up. There's only one! Yeah. And it's animal death. Yeah, I I can't really... (laughs) Which is a bird exploding, by the way. Yeah. Um, (laughs) I'm trying to figure out how the, the... What's listed as the number of triggers relates to what you actually see because at first i thought it was like each time somebody marked it as an instance of triggering because that's what that check mark is that somebody agreed with this that this is triggering Mm -hmm. um 
which by the way two people voted that a bird exploding is triggering. Is, is triggering. Um, which, again, it's, that's one of those things where it's like, if it, it, it you can see it in some instances, but in some instances it's like, no. Right, unless you actually had a pet explode. It's not likely. I'm not seeing it. Or or, oh. or have actually watched an animal explode, whether it's your pet or not. Because I, I, I will be honest, if I looked outside and I saw just like, like a cat or a dog or, or something explode out there, it would probably fuck me up a little bit. Yeah, probably and like not enough to where it w- I would be triggered by a bird exploding in a CGI ca- CGI cartoon movie, but it would fuck me up a little bit. I'm sorry, I'm just I, I just, I'm just looking back at this at the to- page for Toy Story three. I can't believe some of the, the the triggers they have listed here. Loss of childhood. Yes, because okay, that, that is such a trigger apparently. Yeah, I mean, I, I I know that when I think back on the the times that I turned like. 18 i mean oh my god that just yeah i i just, i can't i can't deal i can't i can't deal with thinking about that yeah loss of and, innocence and also, is another one <laughs> loss of innocence i i could understand a bit more but i still i, I don't i don't really buy it also aliens oh my aliens god aliens are my trigger some redneck put that in there yeah you know it was I a mean, redneck who who probably got drunk way too many times and thought the aliens came and probed him up the ass Yes, that is very stereotypical. Probably the same kind of stereotype, st- stereotypical person who would put that in there. Yeah, awareness of mortality. That I will be honest, the awareness of mortality has been hitting me recently. It's it's like I go to sleep at night and I'm just like, you know what? I could go to sleep and never fucking wake up. Welcome but, you to know, my life as a child. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I had existential crises as a child. Damn. <laughs> I had, like, oh, I, I was like, oh just... god, I'm gonna die and I'll be nothing, and I won't even know that I'm nothing because I'm nothing and nothing. Uh, just it was bad. I, I had <laughs> a couple moments when I was like, I'd like look in the mirror in the bathroom and just like stare at myself and be like, holy crap, that's me in there. I I'm inside a body. I I I exist, and there are other people in this world that exist who have yeah. functioning cognizant minds and you know, they can do things. And then I like started walking out of the bathroom and I like freaked myself out because I was like, Oh my God, I'm moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like this total awareness of like, really, I'm just this brain, but I control this whole other, um, excuse the term meat puppet. <laughs> <laughs> meat puppet. I like yeah. it. Um, and just one more, the ever, the ever popular, Cissexism. I would like to know how. I just, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it has to do with Barbie and Ken, and Barbie's all uh, like shocked and whatnot that Ken, the Ken that she meets, has a like the biggest fucking wardrobe ever. Oh yeah. And it, and, and so, because he's a dude, he's not supposed to care about fashion. I assume that she, that's what this is talking she about. She seemed like she was more just sort of like, oh my god, oh my god, this is so amazing. Like, this is so awesome. I mean, I, don't, I, I saw, it's been a while since I've seen the movie, but she was like more excited over the amount of fashion that Ken had. Yeah. Huh. And, I don't know, I, mean, I, I guess you could say that there was like, there was one scene where Barbie dresses up as like a moon landing Ken to get some information from one of the other characters, and then, like, he notices as she's walking away, he, he, she's, like, totally just decked out in, like, a spacesuit, that she's still wearing high heels, and he, like, kind of looks at that, and he's just like, what? And they just shake his head, and he's like, eh, whatever. Yeah, that could be it, too. But it was like, yeah. you know, are they thinking that somebody's trying to say you can only be an astronaut if you're a dude? Because, one, that's not true. There are plenty of female astronauts. Um... Yeah, or is I don't know. It, maybe he like, was just... It was his outfit. Like, of course, somebody else had to wear it to find out what was going on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think the... the fits. I, I think it might have just been like, uh, that Ken, such a weirdo. Yeah, wearing high heels. Wearing high heels in a spacesuit. Wouldn't put it past him. No, yeah. Not he at all. He thinks he's so fashionable. <laughs> That's triggering. Of course, <laughs> and 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 that goes back to you. You know how you brought up uh, Maggie's uh, 
uh, thing on triggering, which I believe at least part of it, because I, I believe I've seen that one too, was uh, triggering is, is as we've mentioned earlier, it's something that actually you know triggers a an actual holy shit response that, from what I've seen, kind of locks you up and and, and makes you kind of a drooling drooling a mass of meat for a little bit. At least that's what I'm how I'm seeing it. If you're triggered, you're like you can't do anything else because oh my god, the memory's coming back and you're paralyzed. So you know yeah. that is triggering. But I mean, what a lot of people call triggering is basically just being uncomfortable. Yeah. It's like it's like this is uncomfortable, so that's triggering. Yeah, oh my god, you made me feel slightly uneasy. I'm I'm so triggered right now. How how dare you? That don't don't talk about clouds. Clouds are my trigger. Yeah. Or or don't talk about car keys. You know, and oh heaven forbid you bring up Klefki. Oh yeah. god. Oh and, and I iPhone I'm an Android user. iPhones trigger me. <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, well, you if, may, you're you're that, if, you, if you're that girl whose Android caught on fire under her pillow, then I could thing. see you being triggered by Androids. Yeah, that would be yeah. understandable. Uh, I, you know, a lot more understandable than just being uncomfortable about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, being like, oh my god, why, why do you use a, a Android? Androids are so not even close to, to Apple. Yeah, it's just. You know, the kind of people that you just want to smack in the face, and that's not a triggering thing. That's a more of you just want to smack the person in the face. And, and you know, that, that, that happens. And so um, because I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to Carl in it this time, because usually I try to come up with a good segue between topics. I, I have nothing. So what also happened within the past month, you know, since we've recorded, is – the Supreme Court ruled on the Hobby Lobby case, which I know everybody else has talked it to death, and <laughs> things are still going on, but you know what? We have shit we want to say about it. I have been yeah. waiting for this. Because <laughs> I, 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 heard, I heard Holly there. At least I'm, I'm assuming that was Holly's side. Yeah, that was... That was Holly. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, uh, but if you've been living under a rock or just not been paying attention to the news, it's possible. It's very possible. Um, the news story that I've got is from thinkprogress.org, which was, was posted almost – well, actually, by the time this goes up, it will have been up a month to the day, uh, <laughs> which reads, In his closely watched Hobby Lobby decision, this was, the Supreme Court held that business owners with religious objections to birth control may defy federal rules regar- requiring most employers to include contraceptive care in their health plans. <laughs> According to SCOTUS blog – hello, doggy. This holding appears limited to closely held corporations as such as Hobby Lobby. Yeah, I read that right. Which is operated by a single wealthy family. Because as as the I think it was the Supreme Court that also ruled that corporations are people. Yeah. yeah. It's like and no they are fucking not. I don't care what the Supreme Court says. They are not fucking people in either sense of the phrase. Well, okay, they are fucking people, but that's kind of more against their will. That then that's not fucking. <laughs> I'm splitting hairs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the decision tears down a long-standing rule providing that religious liberty cannot be wielded to tear down the rights of others, especially in the employment context. At this, as the Supreme Court held in its 1982 United States versus Lee decision, when followers of a particular sect enter, enter into commercial activity as a matter of choice, the limits they accept on their own conduct as a matter of conscience and faith are not to be superimposed on the statutory schemes which are binding on others in that activity. It is not yet clear, however, how far the court went in tearing down this rule. As SCOTUS blog explains, the court's opinion strongly suggests it would reject broad religious claims to, for example, discriminate against gay employees. I'm sure it would. Oh yeah, I'm sure it's going to be so so closely protected. Yeah, and it's one of those things that... Oh, God. So, so in essence, if you're an employer... That provides health insurance. You could claim, yeah, my religion does not believe in birth control, and your female employees are going to be shit out of luck. They'd have to pocket. They'd have to do it out of their own pocket, even though insurance 
with a lot of these jobs that can, you know, if you're if you are an employer that can afford insurance, that means you're doing well. That means you're able to provide insurance as part of pay. Insur health insurance should cover everything under, you know, that that involves taking care of your body. That includes birth control, which means, you know, and it's not even just for preventing pregnancies. There there are women out there as has been stated numerous times on um, between all of my shows and between all of everybody else's shows, it's not just for preventing pregnancies. There are women that take it for the hormone, you know, so their hormones will be straight, or so yeah. that you know when they're when they have their period, their uterus doesn't try and stab its way out, that sort of thing, you know. Yeah, I have a friend who told me. I mean, this this was like a couple months ago before the decision even happened. How um, she had been on birth control for like a, a couple of years or something. And then she had just gone off, and she was just like, and then my hormones just went, Phew. and it was like I was a completely different person for like a couple days. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, like, I don't, I honestly don't know how any of this works, but I don't claim to, you know, say like, well, th I don't think you should have it anyway, <laughs> because I mean, it's it, uh, no. <laughs> it's like it. The the biggest thing here is. There are people, and they're using religion to do this, so they are at least religious-minded people, if not totally religious people, that want mm -hmm. to control women. And, and granted, they probably want to control the, the men, too, but this is one way that they want to control women, and the Supreme Court is allowing it, even yeah. though it's, a, it's not supposed to be. But that's what you get when most of the Supreme Court is in the pocket of people that will use religion to impose their control on others. Like and Hobby when Lobby. most of the Supreme Court are men. That too. Yeah. Because I mean, mm, we have two women on the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. How is that representation? Yeah, that is like that's how the Supreme Court has what nine members, right? Nine members. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's two women, seven men. At the very but, least, two other men on there was like, yeah, yeah, you know what, we're we're striking this down. And there's like one mon minority. Yeah. Like there's there's a. Uh... Oh, Sotom yeah, so uh, Sotomayor and uh, mm -hmm. and oh, and 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 Clarence Thomas, he's still on yeah. on the board, right? Yeah. So never mind. Yeah. So there's there's a there's more crusty old white men on there than there are anybody else. I mean, there Pretty are much there's. Obviously, a little representation, but it's like four to five between other people and crusty old white men. Yeah. And if, and since it is crusty old white men, this other article that I found, there are a lot of articles that I've got in our file here. That there are actually three women on the Supreme Court, by the way. Oh, three women. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So three to six. Okay. I, Still, I we could use corrected. a little bit more, but <laughs> I think we could use a little. Yeah, more. the last one was appointed in 2010. Ah. Okay. Okay. Almost okay. exactly a year after Sonia uh, Sotomayor was appointed to the court. Oh, okay. We learn something new every day. <laughs> yeah. But still, the point is that the ruling was handed down. Five members of the Supreme Court out overruled the four members, and so, you know, if you're an organ, if you are a corporation, you can say, hey, we don't want to provide birth control because we believe it's against our religion, even though you may not believe that way. Because, you know, religion trumps everything else, doesn't it? Well, I mean, <laughs> it's just, it, I, I remember reading a post on my, I think it was on Facebook or Tumblr or somewhere, where they said, like, okay, so if you have a corporation that's owned by Jehovah's Witnesses, does this mean that if you require a blood transfusion, they're not going to pay for that? Mm -hmm. They're not going to subsidize that in their, in, their, in, their, in their health insurance policy? Or Scientologists with psychology? You know, there have been a lot of other things on Tumblr and Facebook that I've seen where people are like, well, but this is a limited ruling. You know, it only talks about these four kinds of birth control. That's not really how the Supreme Court works. I mean, yes, they ruled on one case, but, you know, then lawyers go and use this case as proof to back up, you know, whatever argument they're having mm -hmm. as, you know, this is why, you know, we shouldn't be forced to do this or that or whatever. Yeah. It basically sets a precedent. Yeah. Thank you. Precedent. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I couldn't get over it, so I was it. like, I'll just explain my way around it and hopefully get there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it sets a precedent. 
And the other thing is, um, the the drugs that were, or I guess not solely drugs, because I know an IUD was on the list. Um, but these oh. forms of birth control um, were all supposed to be things that um, get rid of pregnancies, except for that's not how these work. Yeah. They, no, if they anything, prevent, prevent them, but not get rid of them. Right. Right. They prevent them in the way that, you know, an egg may be fertilized and it may stop implantation, mm -hmm. but you are not actually considered pregnant until it implants. Right. That's a, that's a medical definition. Yeah, which, right. which some people why, need to learn. It's why the, yeah, the egg can implant in, you know, like the ovarian tube and then start, you know, start growing. Because it's, you know, even if it's not the uterus, it's still suitable conditions that, you know, for it to to grow and then well that then you know that's a pregnancy that needs to be terminated yeah yeah because i'm just i don't even have the, the equipment for that and i'm just imagining the discomfort that that sounds like it sounds it sounds like it would feel like a kidney stone on steroids on pcp yeah i wouldn't know but i hear that it's incredibly painful and it's obviously incredibly incredibly dangerous yeah. Well, there's literally no way that it's 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 a viable pregnancy because mm -hmm. bef before it ever reaches a point where the baby could even conceivably survive without its mother, then the tube's gonna burst and the mother's gonna die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that wouldn't be good. Uh, no, ooh, that's that, that that's that's a little creepy. Huh. <laughs> you know, you know, and I mean, and I'm not gonna go and watch other stories or see other things about it and be triggered from that. By the way, uh, so. But, <laughs> but no, that is creepy. But but of course, now that the Supreme Court has set the precedent, there are there have been other things that have come up, like um, and again again keeping with the whole pregnancy and wanting to prevent abortions because that's what they want to do. They also, I believe it's been within the same month. Uh, where did I put that? There it is. I want to say it was within the same. Uh, Supreme Court session. I want to say this. I'm not entirely sure, but they also the Supreme Court decided also to throw out the abortion clinic sidewalk buffer zones. Oh my God! So if if you are a pro-life protester, you can go right up to these women that have had to make a really life-altering and gut-wrenching decision based on what's going on at the time. They're... Or maybe maybe they haven't even made a decision yet. Yeah. These are women who are struggling, trying to figure out what they're going to do and what's best for them. Right. Or maybe they're just there to get a medical procedure done that has nothing to do with pregnancy. Yeah. Yeah. In, I, in any case, whether she is struggling or she's just there for a routine thing, they do not need you fuckers in their faces. No, because, like, it, it, and this, this is, like, one of the things that really, really gets to me about this, is that they call themselves sidewalk counselors. Bullshit! Oh they are not uh, counselors. No. Counsel is something that you seek out. It's something that you that you intend to to, to find and to, to make use of. It's not, it's, it's not somebody shouting in your face how you're going to go to hell. Because you're you're aborting your baby, which by the way is not even a baby at this point. It's yeah. not cognizant. It doesn't have you know a way of surviving outside of its mother. I mean, I'll, I'll I, I will say that I okay. I, I, this this might be a little a little bit of a weird tangent, but I will say that I actually do remember being inside my mother. Okay. But I remember a very it's very very brief. It was a very it was like a flash, like right when I, you know, sort of came online, as you could say. <laughs> and I mean, and I, I even remember the the very, very basic concept of being born. I was actually born by cesarean section. So ah. it's it was all very weird and all very it, it, it was just it's a very faint memory in the back of my head. But I mean, it wasn't something like I remember being inside my mom for like a month and being like, well, I wonder when all, when all this is going to change. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if this is it. Is this... No, I mean, like, e even if I was aware, I had literally no concept of what was actually happening. Mm -hmm. So, no, they're not—they're not babies. They're fetuses. Stop muddying the distinction. 
Yes. Is please. I guess was my point. Yeah. Cause... Also, and, and 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 just on the on the, on the concept of buffer zones. Yeah, I mean like. Now there's no more, no longer a buffer zone for you know people who are in a very um, fragile emotional state of mind, but I mean if you want to protest the Supreme Court's decision, you better stay 200 fucking feet away from the Supreme Court. Oh yeah, that, because <laughs> they can have their buffer zones because they don't want to see the protesters. They don't want to have to put up with the protesters. The protesting triggers us <laughs> when you know, as we said, a woman going in to get an abortion. Again, as I was starting out saying. You know, not exactly an easy decision to make here. And you're no, going to allow like... people to come up, pretty much browbeat them, and try and browbeat them into not getting the abortion, making them feel worse than what they already are, you know, using everything in the book. And, and you know, some of them probably even get violent about it. Yeah, and like, let me just say, just, just for clarification, just, you know, like, I'm not saying that a crowd can't trigger a people, like, you know, but I'm just saying, like, as far as the Supreme Court goes... No, but I mean, yeah, like, with, but with with something like this, with a uh, you know people protesting outside of clinics, yeah, that that could very definitely be triggering, especially yeah. like if if the pregnancy that that these women are trying to get you know get rid of is the product of like a rape or something. Yeah, I mean, how could that not be triggering? I, I, exactly, it's just oh god, it's like I, I want to oh. let 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 the, let me. Let me see one of these. Oh God! Oh, <laughs> I, 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 I would, I, I would probably stop whatever I'm doing. I don't care if I was on my way to save the president. I would probably stop what I'm doing, get out of whatever vehicle I'm driving, because odds are I would have to be driving near one of these places, and go up and start just giving these people what for. I might get my ass kicked over it, but you know what? It would be fucking worth it because I am fucking tired of seeing these fucking people pull this fucking bullshit with with people that they have no business doing. I mean, it's like it's like what? Do you have anything better to, you know, these people have better things to do than go and scream at pregnant women who are trying to not be pregnant. Yeah, it's like what business is that of yours? I mean, who who are you to tell people what they can or can't do with something that, that you, and, and, and I mean, I don't want to, you know, honestly cast aspersions, but it seems like a mo most of the people who do this kind of protesting are men, are yeah. the people who would, who are never going to be pregnant. Yeah. And it's... have no concept of, I mean, I have no concept of what it, you know, of what being pregnant is like. I never will. But I mean, I'm not going to try and tell somebody what they think, like what I think that, you know, they should do with a pregnancy. I mean, and, and the thing is, these people don't give a shit about these women. And if they did, as soon as these people said like, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to give up my pregnancy. What am I going to do? They would say like, all right, come with us. We're going to help you get set up. We're going to help you, you know, show you where you can go to get funding for your you know, kid help, you know, get you some discounts on food, on baby clothes, on whatever. Anything that we can help you do to help raise this child. But no, as soon as the baby's out, to quote George Carlin, you're on your own. Pretty much. And, and you know what? You brought up mostly men protesting this. And this show right now has been mostly men protesting the, the from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I am pretty sure Holly, as a woman, would have would... some things to say. So, Holly, please, please, <laughs> have at it, please. Oh, no. Like, it's, it's great to actually have men talk about it because it's like... Oops, there goes my phone. Um, <laughs> um, you know, because it's like, yeah, women talk about this a lot, and a lot of people are like, yeah, but, you know, you're you're a woman, and, you know, you just support it because you're a slut, and blah, 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 blah. You know, all that sort of bullshit. When the fact of the matter is, you know, it, how much anybody has sex doesn't have anything to do with how they feel about um, a woman's right to choose. Right. You know, right. I don't, do I think that I would ever get an abortion? No. I, I honestly can't imagine a circumstance where I wouldn't find it, you know, even if something traumatic happened to me, that I wouldn't find it more traumatic to then go through that. Would I necessarily keep the child and raise it? No. Yeah. Um, but that said, it's not my right to choose that for any other human being. Exactly. Being pregnant is hugely difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. 
you are then not only attempting to care for yourself, but care for somebody else. And it's not my right to tell anybody what they can and cannot do with their body. Right. And and it just reminds me of the case where, and I'm not sure if you guys heard about this, where a woman was in some sort of accident and died and she was carrying a child and the, um, the hospital wouldn't let the husband take the wife off of life support. Oh, I heard about that. Oh God. Oh God. They, they, they basically, the hospital, you know, because she had a baby, they're like, okay, you know what? She has a baby in there. So we're going to make her into a fucking ex lottle tank. Yeah. And, and it's get like the reference gold star for you. Uh, but, mm-hmm. but God damn it. It's like, she's gone. Yeah, By the and time her husband she got was there, like, Listen, this is not what she would have wanted. Yeah. Well, and how far along was the baby? Or the, the, the pregnancy, She rather. had many months to go, I think. Okay, then why is that an issue? You're yeah. just going to leave her on, sh- on on fucking life support for, like, three months while, while the baby just sits there? And Yeah, and, and here's this guy whose wife wouldn't have wanted this. No. Mm-hmm. Now being forced to pay her medical care for being hooked up to life support which he has requested that she not be on, yeah. which she requested that she not be on. Yeah. And even and that, then, I seem to remember, the, like, like at that, that particular point, when she was dead, that then the, wasn't the, the, the fetus also dead by that um, point? No, it wasn't, but they were pretty, like, it, it wouldn't have been viable outside of the womb, and they were pretty certain that... Um, that there was no hope of a normal natural birth at that point. Yeah. So, so it's basically hospital put their, their morals, their religion. I'm, I'm going to assume a religion because I'm pretty sure that was part of the motivation ahead of the well being and the wishes of the woman who died. Yeah. Cause it's just, I yeah, <laughs> and it also really feels like again going back to the you know the idea of how a lot of the people that you know, that are that are out there screaming at these pregnant women are men who have no idea what it's like to be pregnant and saying stuff like, oh well you know if you just keep the pregnancy then you can give it up for adoption. It's like well ad- adoption's not an alternative to pregnancy. It's an alter- alternative to parenthood. Yeah. yeah, it's an alternative to actually raising the child yourself. It doesn't mean that you don't still go through the fact that you're pregnant and go through all those bodily changes and have your hormones just run. I mean, like I said, I've never been, I, I don't, I've never been pregnant, so I don't know what that's like, but I can't imagine that it's pleasant. No, yeah. I can't imagine it either, and I have a damn good imagination, and I have a good sense of empathy, mm-hmm. but even that's difficult for me. It's just, it's just, I can't. I can't even. I can I can sympathize. I can empathize to certain degrees, but the, everything right. And then else at the end no. of and then at the end of all of that, you've got to push a living human being out of you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think mean, it was a movie that compared it pushing a water something the size of a watermelon out of a hole the size of a lemon. <laughs> so it's just. Yeah, it, it's like man, you know, women are hardcore. Yeah. And you know what? My mother is hardcore because she, she, you know, I came out naturally, and she didn't have painkillers. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, you want to talk about hardcore shit. There you go. Oh. And, and yet, men, and, and definitely men, and more likely you're going to see men that are over-religious, on the right, far right, that are, that are saying, yeah, you know, women need to have this, then they need to do this, 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 this. I even see shades of it with with how my parents and and everybody talk to the kids around here, and and it's like, no, 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 no. Don't don't tell them that they're wrong for doing that, and you know, it's you know, and it's usually harmless things like a girl in a dress sitting and she just has her legs open for whatever reason, you know, because it's comfortable. You know, there's no reason why. That a girl should be told not to do that. You know, yeah, people are going to look, but that's the problem with the people, not with the little girl. Mm-hmm. So that that's right. not her problem. I mean, so it's just, uh, but, but, and, and here's, here's the thing 
the other the other side of the coin that we could touch on a little bit. One of the one of the news articles that I put in the file, uh, admittedly it's from 2012, but as far as I know, there hasn't been much of a change to it. But there are health services that 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 uh, that are covered by ins- sexual health services rather that are covered by insurance, and that are probably still covered by the same insurance that 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 says no no we will not cover plan b or birth control or anything else for women but they might cover oh erectile dysfunction drugs like viagra vacuum erection devices because that's what we all need right guys we we absolutely need to use a vacuum to increase the size of our dicks you know for the longest time ever since i saw austin powers i thought those things were were just a joke I literally thought it was just a joke made up by Mike Myers. Oh, <laughs> they exist. <laughs> oh, sadly not. Oh, no. believe me. I, 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 I knew before Austin Powers because I, I grew up looking at porn in porn magazines <laughs> even. And they advertised them in the porn magazines. It was like, I remember then seeing, I saw them on like a Penn and Teller or something. Mm-hmm. You know, bullshit. And I was just like, wow, those things are real. I, oh, yeah. I feel sad now. <laughs> yes. I mean, it was like the ads are like, yeah, you have a I have a penis, the the penis of a porn star, and they had a picture of Peter North right there. Just boom, there you go. <laughs> they also have penile implants. It's what? just, huh? So, okay. So if a man's erectile dysfunction cannot be mitigated with pharmaceuticals or vacuum devices, there's yet another method insurance companies will pay for afflicted men to try. Penile implants. So most urologists tend to use more modern inflatable models, which require users to manually inflate their own erections. Some urologists... <laughs> yes! You, you, if, if... Pump it up! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if the old-fashioned hump, pumping isn't working, we'll, we'll give you a different pump. <laughs> oh, God. They... That is hilarious. <laughs> you can manually inflate your own Manually inflate your own erection. Yes, it's like <laughs> basically balloons in your dick. Sorry, I don't want balloons in my dick. I'm sorry. That just... sounds awful. Oh. That does. It's it's like no... you know, this is one of those instances where I don't have the equipment, so I I can <sighs> you know I have no idea what having an erection feels like, so I I wouldn't know. But just the idea of having something. That sounds to make so in my body to make it bigger. Yeah, that, sounds... that I would like actively make bigger when I felt like it. I mean, I guess it'd be like if you had like impl- implants in like your your boobs or something that you just like spurs up to perk them up or something. I can just imagine oh. a woman like flapping her arms, like <laughs> just pumping her arms up and down, yeah. and be like pumping them up. <laughs> oh, what happens if you accidentally deflate it? While you're using it. Oh. oh. Let's hope That's you're not like inside somebody. Bad. Yeah. Oh. No, 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 no. It's it's okay, baby. Let, let me just get my pump. Yeah. <laughs> Cause, and, and and that's not gonna feel good anyway because you know when you know the vagina closes pretty tightly. You know it can, it can you know, so it's like yeah if you that that's why you need to have it hard when you go in because that that forces it apart but that's a whole sex ed thing oh <laughs> so they also have vasectomies which are covered because you know what's more important than 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 having an erection is to being able to shoot blanks at will to the tune of five thousand to one five hundred to a thousand and all of that but they they noted this article. Most insurance plans do not cover a six thousand to fifteen thousand dollar vasectomy reversal. So if so you're it's okay poor, if men don't want to be pregnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's okay if men don't want to worry about getting somebody or, pregnant. Or, or men don't want to be pregnant. What am I talking about? <laughs> well, it's totally okay would... if men don't want to be pregnant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, but um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's okay for men to not you know, get somebody pregnant or participate in that, or if they don't want that to happen in their life, yeah. but, but it's for super woman, difficult yeah, it's... for women to get that procedure. Yeah. I mean, well, you know what I mean. The equivalent procedure, I guess right. I should right, yeah. specify. It's tube tie yeah. or, or, or what have you, yeah. 
yeah, if you're a woman in her childbearing years... Then you must be able to have all of the children. Yeah. Even though that's bullshit. People are like, well, maybe you just want to wait. And people are like, no, but I, I really don't want one ever. I did, yeah, I just don't don't ever really want to get pregnant. Just never. Yeah, it's just not going to happen. Don't want it to happen. Take these ovaries out of, well, to, tie my tubes, get rid of my uterus, whatever. You know, whatever yeah. needs to be done to where I can still have a normal sex drive. But well, have yeah, kids. having things removed is not necessarily something that you want to do, but there are, you know, right. other procedures, um, you know, because there are ones that can't think of what it's called. I want to say a sure, where they, they actually put something in your fallopian tube that stops the egg from being able to travel. Hmm. So it's like, you know, it... Yeah, it involves, you know, some outpatient surgery, so to speak, but yeah. it doesn't actually involve cutting any part of a woman to do it. Right. Yeah. It's not a, not a hysterectomy or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. But the point is, there there are plenty of ways to do it, and, and men are making it more difficult. God damn it, men. Stop it. Stop it. I know. And number five, circumcision. And... Most private insurance accor- insurers, according to this article, cover circumcisions for new- for uh, newborns, which can cost about $100 out of pocket. $100 to have a part of your dick chopped off. That's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. $100. I don't know how I don't know how much it cost in marks in 1982, but, you know, hun- you know, 100 marks or whatever, I'll just say, you know, and I suddenly don't have a foreskin. Yeah, I mean, this is a whole other topic, but I want to say, I don't think that you should do it, one. But two, if you're going to do it, please, for the love of God, do it in a hospital setting. Yes. Don't <laughs> don't be like some of these news stories we've had on all of these different shows. I've, I'm pretty sure I probably covered one or two myself on, on, on Thespian Talk. It, just, just don't do it. Do not do there it. There have been children who have died from herpes. Yeah. Um for getting um, their circumcision done in a religious ceremony, which involves um, drawing the blood away. Mm. Yeah, I've seen that. It's like... By see... mouth. Yeah. Yes. And these kids get herpes and die because while it's not a life-threatening condition for adults, it is for children. Yes. It is just... Ugh. Plus, you look like you're just trying to give the kid a blowjob. And then that's uh, mm. even creepier. Just uh, no. It's like, but religion, no. No, fuck no. your religion in this instance. <laughs> I do not care. It, it, you know, you know, it's just there are very few things that that I will outright say fuck your religion for, and that is one of them. Yeah, when your when your religion involves your mouth and a little boy's penis, it doesn't matter what it's for. Something needs you need to change. You yeah. need to do something different. Right. You know, like, maybe... You but know, tradition, have... no. No, no, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Fuck your tradition. Do something else. They, they, if you must do something, if you, okay, if, if you can do it and the child is not getting herpes or anything, and you feel you have to do it ceremoniously outside of a hospital, even though it's highly not recommended... Don't let the rabbi and and I'm saying rabbi because the example I'm thinking of is is, is of a Jewish bris, Jewish yeah. bris. Yeah. So that's my example. Well, the moil it actually is the the, the one does the yeah. okay. But regardless, you know this guy, you know you could take like a tube that has like just enough suction to suck the blood away, but not enough to hurt the baby more than you already have, and, and just just do that. There, there you go, sterile tube. There it goes. You don't have to put your mouth on it. Baby doesn't contract herpes from you if you have it. And and, and all is well and good. Yeah. I, I, yeah. You know, I've, I'm, I am more and more of the opinion that if a male wants to get himself uh, uh, circumcised, he should wait until he is old enough to understand and decide for it himself. Should not force that on a baby. Yeah, then get the creepy moil to suck the blood from you. Just... <laughs> Uh, but at least then, oh, at least then, if you're older and you get the moil to suck the blood from you, it could be enjoyable, and also you could actually survive the herpes. 
So that's... it just doesn't sound like an enjoyable prospect either way. No. Yeah. No, get thank you. Skin off your dick. Get, get skin from your dick cut off, and then have a a a, a, a moil suck out the blood. It's, no. There there are instances where I don't mind somebody's mouth on my dick. That is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I think a lot of men out there who are listening would are agreeing with me. I I would imagine that it is all of the men. Really. Yes. I would, I would hope all of the men. Uh, no, no. Like, there's I, probably I just mean, that one guy off in the corner be like. That's well, true. I, I shouldn't that. say that because it's the internet. <laughs> no. So there's inevitably one guy who. Who could wants listen? Listen. Be... <laughs> bloody yes. member in somebody's mouth. Just. Oh. Oh. And wants it for purely religious reasons too. I would imagine. <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh lordy, but. That with that, that is going to be the end of our show for this week. Oh God! So next next week, uh, I have no idea what we're going to have. We're going to see what happens. Uh, hopefully, it will not take us two or three weeks before we get another one out. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> oh Lordy! Although there is there is one week. I I'm not sure if we're going to do it next week. There is one week where I do want to talk because there you know, a lot of people have been putting up Patreons lately. I know uh, Lewis. Uh, Linkara has one up now. I think Nash was talking about doing one as well, and I think it's a good idea. But that's I, I want to take like a whole show and talk about that and people's reactions, pro and con about it. But uh, probably won't be next week unless we just have absolutely nothing else newsworthy to talk about. Um, which who knows? Both could happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, so yeah, look forward to that in the coming weeks. But. Um, if you wanted to find uh, Gonzo Link on the internet, where could we find him? You can find me on YouTube and Twitter and Tumblr uh, at Gonzo Link, uh, handle for all all three of them. Uh, I'm also on the uh, the Gotham High audio drama. It's, uh, six episodes currently. I play Bruce Wayne. I'm also part of Team Brotherhood's uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood of Bridge series, and I also have my own podcast, Focus on the Frames, which you can find on Focus on the Frames Podcast Tumblr dot com. And that's hosted by myself and Zenith Bull Rule. Sweet! Uh, and if we wanted to find Holly Christine, where would we find her? You can find me all over the place as Gookie Gox, G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X. So Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, whatever. And um, you can find my Facebook fan page at Holly Christine Brown. And you can also find me over at Nerdvice. Yay! And me, if you wanted to find me on the interwebs, uh, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at Gomer21XX. You can find my other materials at RTGomer.com and Nerdvice.com. You can also, I need to remember to do this at the end of every podcast, but all of my podcasts are on iTunes. If you're not already listening it, to it there, you can go over there, subscribe to it, and you'll get it you know, within a day after it actually goes live on my site, rtgomer.com. Uh, if you like the show and you want to help support the show with things like better equipment, etc., then um, head on over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx, and you can pledge however much per vi- per uh, production. I, I sometimes differentiate between production and video because while they all go up in video format, I consider podcasts separate from actual videos. So with that little bit out of the way, <laughs> again, uh, and, and as a fair warning, I do 20 to 25 productions per month. So if you want to pledge money, just you need to know what you're getting into there, um, even though you can set your limits and you can be fine that way. Uh, again, that's patreon.com slash gomer to one double X. And I will actually have a way, a way to streamline how I'm going to do that from now on. Hopefully the next time I do a podcast, we'll see. Um, and also, if you're watching this on the YouTube video links or what have you, you're seeing the lovely title card art by my wonderful girlfriend, Becky Hopkins. And she has a Patreon as well, patreon.com slash beckyhop. Go over there. You give her some money. She'll give you some art. And if you give her enough money, she will do a 30-second animation for you. Did I mention she's an award-winning animator? Yes, she is. Give her enough money. She will do some of that award-winning animating for you. Yes, you. <laughs> And she is awesome. Again, that's patreon.com slash Becky Hop. So go check cool. her out. Check out check out all of our links. Check out all our stuff. Check out Nerdvice and RTGomber.com, which, by the way, right now as, as the show is going up, we do have the auditions going. So if you go over to RTGomber.com and you want to audition for a spot on the site, just go over there, hit the site audition link at the top, and fill it out, and I'll take a look at your stuff. We've actually, we've actually had a pretty good response so far. So, And I've got some really good uh, – 
really really good people sending some stuff in so uh might be might be a little difficult making some decisions <laughs> so so it'll be great um but anyways thank you guys for listening we will catch you next time and until then this is gomer the ranting thespian with holly christine and gonzo link signing off Bye. see ya Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.